Ah, Slanesh, Games Workshop's sexy little mistake. The youngest of the gods, the most awkward god, and the chaos faction with the least models. And of those models, most aren't exactly fan favorites. Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Eons of Battle. In the world of Warhammer, evil comes in four flavors. Well, there is a fifth one, but we don't talk about that one. The four flavors are Korn, the god of war, murder, rage, and battle, Zinch, the god of change, sorcery, fate, and hope, Nurgle, the god of death, disease, despair, and decay, and Slanesh, the god of pleasure, sensation, excess, and desire. And already, Slanesh is the weird one. The other gods are all about exterior things, where Slanesh is all personal. It's all inside thoughts, and it's pretty icky. Games Workshop has been in a circling pattern around Slanesh for a decade, deciding what to do with them. Their lore is pretty hardcore, but the models are so-so. Some of them are incredible, like the Keeper of Secrets, and some are the Demonettes. I don't think they're bad, just a little bland. With wavy Medusa hair and crab claws, these are obviously minions meant to be masked, but that's part of the problem for me. Demonettes right now feel a lot like the Necrons did in Warhammer 40K's third edition. They have a very small amount of admittedly dope lore, but no real personality, nothing that makes them into a civilization to get invested in. They're just a mysterious force. Demonettes are warp spawn, but they're also just fellas. Like they have their own opinions and beliefs. They're conscious beings, not a monolith of pale skinned crab ladies. So what if Demonettes had some personality? Keeping their lore of androgynous temptresses, the handmaidens of the Prince of Pleasure, while also letting them develop some history and culture of their own. Well, we did that, introducing the Warriors of Paradise. Demons of Pleasure with some personality. Each model was sculpted to give its own story and character while living inside some design principles, like Art Nouveau inspired arms and armor and the disturbingly alluring forms. These models are ready to emerge from the rift into reality to cause some mayhem. And in terms of color, I'm thinking pink. I primed my gals black and then gave them a zenithal of white paint. This will be a great undercoat for some speed paint. I put a magenta speed paint all over the flesh of these warriors of paradise. This will give me a vibrant magenta on all the raised areas and a dark warm purple in the recesses. Then I watered down some pink and began to highlight the warp spawn flesh, painting on highlights, adding more and more pink until the skin was looking bright, like a bubblegum pink. Then for the armor and cloth, I painted on a dark blue speed paint, and then once that was dry, I did the same as with the pink, making up a blue and painting on highlights over top of the speed paint. It got me about 80% of the way there, so just a few brush on highlights and it was perfect. I painted more speed paint on the horns using a bone color, and then on the weapons I painted on earth color in preparation to turn them into some bright gold. I used a bright yellow as a highlight color, painting this on the tops of these things' weapons and armor. Then for the eyes, although black eyes are the norm, I think a big white glowing pupil will add some life to these faces. This was quite the task on the one head with nine eyes. These demons come with 17 different head options, ranging from rather normal to really really weird, so every creature is unique. Now with my Slaneshi Knights complete, it was time to give them some regal bases. And for this, I'm going to need the greatest cereal of them all, Kellogg's Special K Red Berries. I cut this up into half inch cubes and then glued these down to the bases, shiny side up. After a black prime, I was ready to make some fake marble. I sprayed on some gray paint, making random uneven patterns. Then I took a wet wipe and pulled it apart a little bit. Then I set it down over top the bases and sprayed on some gray from above through the wet wipe. After gray, I did some gold, then some blue gray, then some pure white. I glued my gals down onto these bases and then painted the rim of the base black. I now have a force of bright pink weirdos. A little bit of a departure from my normal thing. They aren't heavily armored space marines or a disheveled orc wah, but some immaculately perfect warriors. Of all the Prince of Pleasure's handmaidens, the Warriors of Paradise are the most bellicose, taking skill with blades to dizzying levels. They fight amongst themselves in gladiatorial combat, whooping and singing as their blades clash together in an attempt to draw the attention of their Dark Master, hoping to catch his favor and be unleashed upon the mortal realms to experience what happens when their obsession meets living flesh. The Warriors of Paradise were sculpted by Licorice, the same artist who did our animated intro, and are our fifth miniature series to date. We have done the Squid Mage, the Vine Knights, the Futuristic Elven Warlocks, and the Old Bound Demon. You can purchase 3D models of these on Comics, Games, and Things, and the Warriors of Paradise are on our Patreon for the rest of September. We are also making physical copies of the Warriors of Paradise available on our website for pre-order. If you have any other ideas of miniatures you would like to see us do, please leave those in the comments below. I can't wait to paint up a couple more of these and try out an all Demonettes kill team. Thanks for watching.